So hello, my name is Chi Chi and I'm part of Crops Not Shops and I was really happy to do an interview with Rakesh because I've done a permaculture course with him which was absolutely mind-blowing and he's doing a food forest eight-day intensive course at the land at Crops Not Shops and I was itching to do an interview with him because food forests are a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful way of growing food. And I've been part of some in other parts of the world and it's been so beneficial for the communities. I thought an interview uh, to get deep into it was a very good idea. So over to you, Rakesh. So we start by describing what a food forest actually is. So a food forest is a way of growing food that mimics nature, but not just food, many other things. So by mimicking nature, looking at how nature has created richness and abundance for thousands of years, uh, which has basically fed all of our ancestors before agriculture. So we know nature has the ability to create an abundance of food. However, most of the food that is grown in that way for today's standards is not particularly um big enough for what most people want um even though it is nutritionally very dense foods so the reason why there is not as big you know the reason why nature creates crab apples instead of big juicy apples or small prunus for spinoza instead of big plums is because there's not enough nutrients in the system to keep them going and so well, when means- we design a forest garden we so just design that- it so what that means is that when when we have essentially um, fruit trees that have been genetically modified to a certain degree, they require a huge amount of maintenance. And yes, exactly. So if we see in nature, nature only produces small fruits because they want to produce enough seed. They want to produce thousands of seeds that get dispersed. When we try to then grow fruit that is much bigger than nature intended, uh, there isn't enough nutrients in the system to easily be able to give that much fruit. So uh, we need to now work hard to actually create those extra nutrients. I mean, we could do it smartly, like in a forest garden, or we could work hard and actually continuously feed the trees additional nutrients to compensate for the bigger fruit and what i want to home in on what you said about work hard um because one of the things that's really really wonderful about a food forest is that it it, it initially there is a, a huge amount of input that is required um but eventually when you have an established healthy ecosystem you don't have quite the same level of hard work in terms of you know, supplementing with fertilizers, compost, et cetera, the the food that you are growing in a food forest, but also in terms of pests. And what's interesting about that is not only how that reduces the amount of hard work and time that you need to put in to constantly create the food production, but also in terms of its resilience. So could you could you talk about, for example, like in an established, how long it takes to establish a food forest? give or take and also um, once it's established how much how many hours you spend um, you know weeding for example or uh, in comparison to maybe a more conventional allotment or market garden so obviously there's it totally depends on the space that you're designing and what it's starting with what you know are you starting with a forest are you starting with a field are you starting with bare rock are you starting with so obviously, depending on where you're starting, will dictate how much work you need to do to create a food forest. If you imagine in conventional food growing, uh, you have to do all of this work continuously, day in, day out, for nine months of the year. And even in the, the kind of close season, there's still little bits of work that you need to be doing. So you're continuously working um in order to produce that so the amount of effort you're putting in is huge which is why a lot of people uh they just don't have the time to do that 
and the amount of well, results you have that they get back. Chance as well that changes like if somebody has an injury or a child or an illness or there is a natural disaster of some kind which requires more time as well like things come up <laughs> exactly and so the return that they get for the amount of effort they put in quite often is is disappointing and so it's easier for people to just go to the supermarket you know to the farmer's market whereas in a forest garden I say it depends on where we're starting uh, but once you've designed it once you've uh, got the nutrients into the system then each year the trees will grow so for example if a lot of uh, the fruit you're going to get is you know or a lot of the food you're going to get is like fruits and nuts and vegetables and things the fruit trees in particular could take four five six seven eight ten years before it starts fruiting so that doesn't mean that you wait that long so you plant other things in between to kind of get yield from year one but as those trees really start to grow uh, they start producing food you get your ecosystem to start producing the water the minerals the nutrients and cycling everything so that it feeds the plant uh, and in this way the amount of work you have to do is less and less so for example i could talk about a garden i made for my parents uh it took over five years maybe 20 well i know it took us 25 days of actual work uh, to actually implement it and you know in the first two so days was with five days of planting and moving and designing and then five years to let it establish and grow so in the first year we spent about seven eight days actually working on it and and so the first few were with a bunch of students they all came over and we just did a blitz and then after that it's like two or three days a year just tidying a few things up just because you create an ecosystem so there's no space for weeds to come in because you've already planted stuff there there's already something growing there a weed will only come in to repair the damage that humans do when they bear the soil but we don't create bare soil so the weeds don't need to come and the few that do okay in most cases they're actually very useful and so yeah so so we don't need to be continuously planting because 80 90 percent of everything is perennial plants and the rest is self-seeding plants and so uh you just continuously you never ever have to seed anything on you never have to you know put it into little seed them and then move them and keep watering them nurturing them and then when they get a bit bigger re-putting them into another pot and then think oh maybe i can put them out and you put half them out thinking the frost has gone and then the frost comes frost and kills everything mm. or the slugs come and eat everything and it's like well luckily i still have some and i put a few more out <laughs> and, da, 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 da. and then eventually you get something and then uh something else happens and you know it's it's a lot of work to do it that way whereas our stuff whatever grows grows Mm, absolutely absolutely and once it's established the, the the ecosystem balances out anything that's in balance so if you if you do have a, a situation of pests coming to the area which it does happen a, a food forest garden is so much more resilient because it instead of taking away from the biodiversity it gives a home for the biodiversity mm -hmm. So there is just more resilience generally in terms of pests and even things like, you know, so that we've had so much rains this year, <laughs> just a crazy amount of rain. In Glastonbury, it's just been like, a, like if you're into mud baths, it's been heaven. <laughs> but, you know, that also causes a huge amount of delays in growing things. And, 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 and we've got a massive influx of slugs and things like that. And in a food forest, obviously, these things initially are very challenging, but eventually the ecosystem balances itself out nature does that she just works out what needs to be done for things to work properly yeah i mean important point i mean personally i haven't noticed in my garden i've been first of all i was in india for uh, three months and then literally uh, i've literally just got back i was on a night ferry uh from ireland uh i haven't actually slept for 48 hours and i'm literally uh literally just kind of stepped in to do this this talk 
and <laughs> and i and in ireland yeah i mean it was literally we were designing and making a food forest and in a really and so much rain it, incredible uh and but what's so interesting much water. about that is that you were saying you were away for three months so your food forest gardens they're doing you just well that's nothing uh for seven <laughs> years after my parents passed away i designed it for my parents they passed away and for seven years it was abandoned until i came back um because of covid i was forced to come back to england and so over the covid period for the next uh 12 months quite literally 80 percent of all my food came from a garden that was abandoned for seven years wow so there was so much food in it so much food because it was designed to do no that. one done anything no one watered it no one ever even in these real extreme years that we've had of, of incredible amounts of you know sunshine and lack of rain everything still grow you know a few things still struggled yeah. nothing died a few things struggled and you know so maybe i didn't get as many raspberries or strawberries or whatever but i had loads of cherries i had loads of mulberries i had apples galore i had no, you know, don't worcester you berries just water. berries red currants <laughs> black currants you know um japanese wine berries i had so much burdock and kiwi berries I, not in my garden that died oh. that died uh, <laughs> uh more or less the year that i put it in so oh, no. the kiwis didn't but grapes tons of grapes um it's just so like the list is abundant isn't it it really is which then brings me on to what's your opinion on the productivity of what an established um healthy food okay. forest can can create versus for example a, a traditional same sized allotment or or market garden i've never i'm not a an academic person as anyone knows me i, I <laughs> numbers and statistics knowledge <laughs> Numbers and statistics pass me by quite easily, so I, I can't give you a, like a scientific uh, response to that. What I know is that 80% of all my food came from a garden that is kind of, let's say, 100 square metres. And, and a significant part of that is a huge cherry tree. And, mm. um, and so what you have is you have really nutritionally dense foods. And because you're using all of the layers, you know, I've got trees, I've got shrubs, I've got uh, things that creep along the ground, I've got things that grow under the ground, I've got, you know, the whole physical space, stuff that climbs, I've got all of my space is utilised. Uh, you know, it's a three dimensional space. So actually, we're using, you know, five times as much space as a conventional crop would, you know, I've got um instead of just the, the floor i've got things growing uh 10 15 meters up in the air as well as stuff on the floor as well as stuff growing halfway up that 10 meters five you know five meters whatever i've got everywhere you look there's food mm. everywhere you look there's food so there's so much diversity and as I say if in one year because of some climatic factor one thing doesn't fruit well other things will so there's so much resilience in there you know if, if there's a, a strong wind at a particular time of year and so a particular thing was flowering at that time and there's none of that that year no problem it'll come back the year after mm. or in some cases some plants even have a second wind and they try again and um i don't know if you've noticed but in the last few years apples have been flowering twice a year Mm. because of climate change uh, i don't know if you notice that but i've seen that in quite a few places um here in the uk in particular so so yeah so trees are you know flexible they're 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 resilient remember all plants want to fruit they mm. want to grow mm. it's their built-in desire it's their built-in energy it's it's what they do and you know and they're going to do their best to do that obviously the really weak plants that are in a completely wrong environment you know you take a tomato from uh from you know the the kind of tropics and you try and plant them in a temperate climate 
you know they're gonna need help they're gonna they're need gonna, help. exactly i feel like that i'm from the tropics and i ah. need help <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, they'll struggle so they'll get diseases they need more watering they need more support they need this they need that they need more nutrients and and you know and they struggle and they will not survive until the next year whereas in the tropics they're like grapes They'll yeah, just come yeah, back year after year yeah, after year after year. They grow like weeds in, in the tropics. But yep. but that's where you find out, for example, on this course, we're going to be finding out about what actually works in this climate, in this country, um, and that it grows like a weed. And we've seen how prolific weeds are. And imagine if those, well, some of those weeds we, we do eat, you know, and they're Definitely. great. Um, but, you know, you can't just live off nettle soup, you know, for the whole of spring. <laughs> you want to have a bit, you know, you want to have some raspberries in there too. <laughs> so we're going to be learning on the course about all, all of the um, very high nutritional value food that can grow in this kind of a climate. Um, so at which... any one time, you probably have a choice of uh, during the, 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 let's say, the spring, summer and autumn of at least 20, 30 different greens that you can pick at any one time. Mm. Even in February in London, I have got a choice of about five different greens that I can pick fresh. Mm. You know, because... And fresh is an important, an important aspect because actually I, I did some research about how quickly um, nutrients. veg loses its nutrients. And for example, spinach can lose up to 70% within 70 of its nutritional value within 24 hours, mm -hmm. which means that if you're getting something that's even just been transported rather than straight from the garden, you're, you're not getting the same nutrition. Yeah. And because of that, and because of the style in which many people eat, how they combine foods and things, uh, most people uh, are not getting enough nutrients from the food they're eating. Mm. And so their body says, I need to eat more. And the more you eat, the more energy is required to actually process and digest the food in order to make it absorbable. And therefore, the more energy you're consuming every day, which is why you feel tired after a meal, and the less energy you have left for healing. Which is why, you know, the, there are so many diseases out there caused by just really inappropriate ways of, of eating. And the fact that we have so little nutrients in our food, uh, you know, if we buy from supermarkets and whatnot, uh, and then combine that with not really understanding you know so eating for taste rather than as a, a fuel for the mind body and spirit uh leads to so many problems and that can be so quickly reversed just by understanding how to eat good local fresh produce in the right way yeah absolutely and in, in terms of the productivity, um, I know that, for example, in the US, um, there is quite a few examples of pretty remarkable food forests. And I saw a statistic, I don't know how realistic this is and what, what this means, but that actually when they compared the productivity, like what they could harvest from a few of these food forests for the same sort of scale of size, um, it was something like six times more. And that Doesn't didn't even me. include when there was an ecological disaster, the food forests carried on yielding and the conventional farms couldn't. Struggled. And so, that doesn't surprise me at all. But what is infinitely more fascinating is I was once described as the most productive, lazy hippie anyone's ever met because I put so much time and work and effort into working out ways that I can be lazy later on. So making a food forest the amount of energy you put into the food production system, the amount that you get out, you know, so instead of working, let's say, 300 days in a year to get a certain amount of yield, you just said you get about six times, let's say five or six times as much yield for only doing 10 days in a year, yeah. five days in a year, and the rest is just harvesting. In fact, and enjoying I remember... it. I remember telling one of my students that uh, actually in 10 years time, the hardest thing you're going to, you know, the thing that you're going to complain the most about 
is I don't know what to do with all of this food. I've got way too much. And no lie, Brilliant. very, very recently on a, on a podcast we were doing together, she said those exact words. I don't know if she remembered me saying that, but she said, oh, my God, I have no idea what to do. I've got so much food. I yeah. just don't know what to do with it all. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah and, um, and this is a real dilemma, you know. So now you've got Huge. surplus food. Yeah. No. Well, nature is so abundant. Your when you surroundings, your family, your friends, it, your neighbors, you know. got to make a lot more friends. <laughs> but most, more importantly, you're also feeding nature. That's yeah. you know the whole biodiversity loss, as say, mm. is infinitely more problematic than even climate change for me. Huge, huge, and also time. For for I, what I have, what I've been finding is that time is for a human being in our society the way we are now. Um, time is one of the most valuable resources that we have mm -hmm. and the reality is is that if somebody needs to make ends meet for whatever reason they need to spend time doing that and costs are going up more and more and more and our lifestyles are meaning that we don't always have the option of being able to be in an allotment for long periods of time and if something goes wrong we may not be able to attend it fast enough to save the the crops so I think the the good thing about the food forest is that the, the element of time is a huge gift because what it means is instead of spending so much time working on trying to keep your head above water with everything growing and and sometimes it can actually be quite stressful instead you have a a, a a more enjoyable process where you're in there when you want to be and you're harvesting and it actually creates a, a richer capacity for human beings to to enjoy culture and music and family time and all of this kind of stuff which is really important really really important and, and my experience of a food forest was that we had so much food and so much growth that we desperately needed to have people come so we ended up throwing parties so that everyone could eat the food and the parties meant that you know we had live music we had artists we had dancing and that enriches a life so much and you don't have time for that when you are I have a full-time job of growing all the time you know you can travel the whole world world without worrying because you've got your food forest in the back and it's just doing this doing its thing and then it feeds you beautiful and high nutritious stuff when you get home and and I think the time element what you said about being a lazy gardener it's brilliant you know because we should have to be lazy we need time off we need to be able to just not be stressed for a moment be fed you know it's like good parenting you know like good parents are really just there for you <laughs> and you don't have to make like a huge effort to be something you know whatever it is and they just hold you and that's what a food forest does you put your time into it and then what it gives in return is so much and, and not just to you but also to the biodiversity and ecosystem that you're in you don't have to take anything away from nature the opposite you're healing her you're saying thank you to her by making it like that and she says thank you to you in return with so much abundance you have to throw a party it's the only way of getting through it all the food <laughs> yeah i mean you said it all day I don't need yeah to <laughs> Absolutely. So tell us a little bit more about the course and what you're going to be doing um, with the course. So it's eight days. So it's set up in such a way that people can come to all eight days or just come to one day on its own. And, you know, so we'll start, for example, by describing what is a forest garden and how to design one. So the first few days, you learn how is it that you could design a forest garden for your own back garden or front garden. And so the first couple of days are fairly generic so that you can learn the basics of it. And as I say, you can then learn how to do it in your own space. You can make, you know, design your own community garden. You can design your own personal back garden or whatever. Then we start going into more detail about looking at the venue and the site. And then we start designing that physical space. And so day by day, we then start adding, you know, so I'm mainly a permaculture designer, but forest gardens for me are a real, um, it's really the most immaculate way of expressing permaculture. So when I design my forest gardens, I design them and I put lots of permaculture design in there as well, meaning, so we'll then start looking at what that means. So we can now start adding 
the non-food growing elements into it so do we have a children do we need a children's play area do we want a uh an outdoor kitchen do we want um i know a, a compost toilet do we want a meeting space a teaching space do we want you know so what other areas you know do we want a sauna a biochar fueled you know uh, outdoor sauna what is it that we we want in our spaces and then we start designing those and integrate them into the forest garden so bit by bit i just keep showing and most importantly especially for people who have done a permaculture course what i find is especially if they haven't done it with me uh they learn a lot and then when it actually comes to implementing they've forgotten a lot of it and they've forgotten most of it and so what I do is I encourage everyone to create a toolbox so that you can just go back to your toolbox and really quickly find the right tool and um, yeah, get back into the flow of it. And so what I'll be showing is I'll be showing my toolbox, which is very comprehensive, and I'll be showing how I make my designs. And But we will make the design together collectively, collaboratively, but I will take the lead on it. So it becomes a really good, rich, strong, vibrant design that all of us contribute towards. And and, and the, the last few days, we then start making it happen. We start yeah. implementing whatever bits of it. So in Ireland, for example, we made the design. And then the first thing we did is we started working on the water management because it was absolutely necessary. And with the, with the amount of rain that they had. So it's a good thing it was raining when you were there, so you could really see what needed to be, not what needed to be done as a priority for the for the food forest to thrive. Exactly. So during many many parts of the year, there's way too much water, and then during the summer, there's maybe not enough. So, um, so I designed it in such a way that we capture the water as high up on the landscape, and then we move it to different parts of of the space so that um, all of the soil retains the moisture deep down but then we build um yeah we grow in such a way that you know the the, the drier spaces um actually you know is, is where many of the other trees grow and so the trees aren't swamped they aren't uh, they don't drown in, yeah yeah they don't drown so it, but that's a specific situation for you know it was in uh, west cork so right on the you know, full on Atlantic uh, rains every single day. And um... well, to be honest, we we've had that in in Glastonbury as well. Like, a, you know, more la last winter, it was more that it went below freezing and stayed below freezing for long periods of time. But we didn't have a huge amount of rain. I mean, I wasn't here. <laughs> I went out to the tropics. <laughs> but um but we did have that this year where it wasn't below freezing so much, but it, it was, I would say 90% of the time it was raining. So it is a really important thing to have that, to have the, the water management. And also because we have been getting longer and longer droughts and it, it can be make or break for a plant. Um, yeah, you know, I, we basically I, we just store the water in the ground so that when we need it, it's there it where happen. the plant needs it and it doesn't yeah. evaporate and yeah, yeah. so That's we have that brilliant knowledge. well i look forward to it what are the dates of the um of the course so maybe you've got those to hand it's 24 25 24th or 25th it's towards the end of, it's yeah the last week of june uh, yeah for eight days. the crops not shops festival exactly which so i think you're right 25th it starts yeah 25th perfect and it's eight days and you can come in at any point during it if you want to do one day two days three days or you can be there obviously throughout all of it camping uh etc and, and we're it's all, all by donation so people yeah. just give whatever they feel is fair i call it conscious contribution so whatever they think is fair to me in exchange for the knowledge that they're getting and what they can afford so whatever you see on the promotion they're just suggestions they're not uh it's not a rule so if you can't afford that no problem just come talk to me make a suggestion and yeah and just come along we want you there beautiful beautiful way of of distributing such amazing amazing wisdom and knowledge and i know that i did your 
permaculture course last year and it was just wonderful and the way that you organize it and the way that everybody who had participated bonded by cooking together and eating together it was really really magical and it was so diverse such different people who came really really amazing experience so i think this... i have to say that wasn't a full permaculture design course what you did was a series of one day permaculture related courses mm. so during a full permaculture design course it's even stronger because you've got 15 20 people there for two weeks together um and as i say a significant part of my way of teaching or of what i try to facilitate is that community bonding side it really is about how we make decisions together how we listen to each other how we express ourselves so that we can hear each other hear what each other's needs are so that we can passionately go out of our way to take care of each other yeah absolutely yeah I, i'm so looking forward to it i can't wait and it's going to be my son's birthday in the middle of it so we're going to have a food forest party <laughs> amazing thank you rakesh awesome. for your, and your answers